Start with heating your vegetable oil over medium heat. I use about half a liter to fry the whole fish. Now add some flour. It will make the fish have a crispy texture and not stick to the pan. Also prevent the oil from splashing around as well. Give it a stir and wait a few minutes until the oil is hot. When it's hot, place your fish into it and cook the fish for about 10 minutes. FYI, to make the fish cook evenly and cook faster, you want to diagonally cut the meat open. I like to add some coffee lamb leaves to fry with the fish because it's going to give a nice aroma to it. Now 10 minutes have passed, it's time to cook another side. And to keep the fish in a nice shape, I'm using two spatulas to flip it. Now I will let it cook for about 15 minutes. Actually, I have a few problems. My pan is a bit too small with this fish, so I have to use the spatula to hold the fish and cook its tail. 15 minutes have passed, let's cook the other side for 5 more minutes. Ooh, the fish looks delicious! So you want to remove it to a stainer and set it aside on a paper towel to drain the excess oil. Now make the sauce. I will start with lemongrass and I want to thinly slice the part with the purple color because that's the most fragrant part. Then thinly slice some red chilies and for the rest, I will pound it soon. And the garlic, just finely chop it. After slicing red onion, I'm going to separate the layers because it's easier to eat like that. Now I will cut this lamb into wedges before removing the seeds. This cilantro root is very tough, so I will thinly slice it and pile later on. And for the leaves, just roughly chop it. You want to start pounding the cilantro root and the garlic until fine. Then follow with the chilies. After that, add palm sugar, fish sauce, and warm water. You will stir to mix until the sugar is dissolved. Then add lamb juice. At this moment, you can taste a bit and adjust the taste by your liking before adding the herbs. Now give it a mix, then transfer the sauce to a bowl before pouring it all over the yummy fried fish. This chili sauce goes very well with this fried fish. It tastes so good. I don't think one plate of rice is enough for me now. Today, I will show you guys how to cook Thai fish cakes or Thot Man Pla. It is a very famous Thai street snack or appetizer that you can find all over Thailand. The main ingredients for this recipe, of course, fish meat. And today, I chose Pla Krai. It's a bit difficult even in Thai word. I will add some white sugar. Then, my homemade red curry paste fish sauce, cooking oil, it helps to make it even tender, and an egg. This also helps to make the fish meat tender as well. It's time to mix everything well. By the way, you can use another fish like cod, catfish, basa, or else, but using a crow feather back fish should give a tender texture. Actually, I might need more time than I thought for this part. Because at first, it's still smooth and quite runny to make a shape. So I will have to mix, mix, mix. The more you pound, toss or process, the more you make it fit. Once it's finally able to hold its shape like this, I add sliced cafe lamb leaves and sliced yard long bean and mix it all well. I use cafe lamb leaves because it will give a very nice aroma and yard long bean will give a nice little crunchy texture. But I don't recommend to add too much because the liquid in the bean can make the fish paste become runny again. I then add Thai holy basil or ka prao. It helps a lot to kill the fishy smell and replace it with a nice aromatic smell. Can you hear that? That sound means it's bouncy enough. Perfect! If your hand is dry before touching the fish paste, it will crazy stick to your hand. Trust me, this is why I make it wet a bit. I take like one and a half tablespoon and shape it a bit thick. It's not street food, we are cooking at home, so let's make it satisfying, shall we? Many people use a ton of oil, but I will not because it actually doesn't really make a difference pan fry and deep fry 
at the end result is pretty much the same. You will see it soon. That's very, very fine. Another important point, I use low heat to avoid burning out and having the inside still raw. I will let it fry on both sides. It will only take a few minutes to get perfectly cooked. Once we finish this part, we are going to set it aside and start to make a dipping for fish cakes. The dipping will have more layers once you just roughly pound the peanut in the mortar. I don't mind to have their skin in the sauce, so you can remove it or not, or even buy peanuts without skin. I will move it to a small bowl, then set aside. And ready for the spicy part? I use dry chili for the color in the sauce, and fresh chilies for more spicy and aroma fresh smell. And some salt. No need to pound until it's fine, just roughly pounding is okay. I add some fish sauce and palm sugar and keep stirring until the palm sugar is all dissolved. Tamarind juice goes in and I stir a bit. Then add chilies and stir to mix. I will let it simmer for a few minutes until the sauce becomes thick. Once the sauce can stick on a spoon, it means it's ready. Time to add the crunched peanuts to a small bowl. The fresh veggies to freshen up the dipping. And pour the spicy and sweet sauce on top of it. Let's give it a stir. I taste a little bit. It's spicy! But this is what I want. <laughs> I think you really cannot miss these yummy and easy Thai sweet cakes. The taste is full of aroma and crunch. Trust me, the sauce makes it even better. Sweetness, sourness, spiciness, saltiness, and also fresh by cucumber and shallot. I will show you guys how to cook steamed fish with fried garlic. In Thai, we call it Pla Nung Si Iu. Let's start prepare the garlic. To make it easier to remove its skin, I will cut off the garlic heads first. Then I'm going to smash it with a knife. And like that, you will remove its skin very easily. Now, let's finally chop it. Actually, you can prepare less garlic than I do. But when I have to make crispy garlic, I like to make more than needed and keep some for later. Next is ginger. Thinly slice it for about 8 pieces. And I will just crush the rest. I will keep these ginger slices and I will place them on my plate later on. And for the crushed ginger, I will use it to stuff the fish. So let's separate and set them aside. Now green onion. I just cut it into 2 inches length chunks. Then cut it into stripes. For the bottom part, I'm going to break it up a little bit. Then slice it. Now it's time for the sauce. In a small bowl, I will add soy sauce, oyster sauce, sesame oil, sugar, and ground white pepper. Mix the sauce well and set it aside. I bought this fish with its scale and organs already removed by the seller. I will diagonally cut 3 to 4 slits on the fish to open its meat on both sides. That helps to let the fish cook evenly. Now it's time to put the ginger that we have prepared earlier. Then following with some sliced green onion. We do so to make the fish smell better. It kills the fishy smell. Start to prepare a plate to cook the fish on. I'm going to put the sliced ginger on the plate and some green onions. Now it's time to place the fish on top of the herbs. Before adding the fish, make sure your steamer is really hot. <sighs> It looks like my fish is quite big for this steamer. If you are a streamer brand, please contact me. I will let the fish cook for about 10 minutes. And during that time, I will fry the garlic. Turn on the gas, low to medium heat, then add cooking oil into a small pot. Once the oil is starting to have bubbles, 
It's time to add the chopped garlic. Stir and let it fry for about 10 minutes. Always keep an eye on it and stir from time to time because the garlic can get burnt quite easily. Once it turns to a light yellow color, I remove it to a strainer and drain the garlic oil in a small bowl, then set it aside. 10 minutes pass, it's time to remove the unnecessary water from the fish doesn't taste that good, so I remove it. After that, I will add some sauce and my garlic oil all over the fish. I will bring the fish to steam again for 10 more minutes. My plate is ready to welcome this yummy fish. Pour the sauce all over the fish. And don't forget to add a lot of crispy garlic. Lastly, sprinkle some green onion on top. Mmm! Tom Yum is mostly a hot and sour soup and made of a broth full of fragrant spices and herbs. But there is also many fresh ingredients in the soup such as lemongrass, cafe lamb leaf, chilies, and lamb juice. I will show you how to cut shrimp because if we put it all like this in the soup, trust me, it will not look nice at all. I will keep the skin off the shrimp but I have to make it look neat and nice first. To do so, I will cut the antennae, the roast trump, and the tail sun. The last two parts are very sharp so you have to really remove it. Not only that, but I will also remove the eyes and the walking legs of the shrimp. Can you see the tail sun? It used to cut my lip once. Trust me, I had no fun at all for a few days. Then, I will cut to open the back from the top to the tail. Remove the black vein. I don't want to have that in my soup. It looks ugly, don't you think? After that, wash it again and set aside. Now, they look nice enough to put in the tom yum soup and there is no more danger for your lips. The fish I showed today is red tilapia but you can use snapper, grouper or sea bass. I will use straw mushroom for this recipe. To do so, I will just cut it in half. But if you can't find this, you can use like oyster mushroom or orange mushroom instead. I once used to cook a whole straw mushroom in tom yum soup when I ate it, it exploded in my mouth and I got burnt, really unpleasant. This is why now I prefer to cut them in half before cooking. I recommend you do the same, except if you want to reproduce my painful experience. This is very important part so you really can't skip it because I will show you how to prepare the important ingredients for this recipe. To have a good spicy taste and spicy aroma, you should mix both red and green chilies the whole shallots and garlic for a naturally sweet taste in the soup. Lemongrass, galangal, cafe lamb leaves. You can miss any of these for a good tom yum. To really bring out the fragrance from lemongrass, I will roughly break it up with a pesto. Then just slice it into medium chunks. Remove the midrib and roughly tear the leaves apart. Just like that. Slice the galangal, not too thin, because I want to be able to see when I have to remove it from the soup later on. Look at this lamb! I never seen it big like this before. I just got it from local market. I bought one kilogram, and it cost me less than one dollar, with no seeds and a lot of juice. Very happy about it. I will pour the chili, and you can add just the taste by your liking. But as you know, I really love spicy, so I will use it. Like, oh, I will just roughly pound it. If you can eat spicy, close the video and unsubscribe now. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. If you can eat much spicy, either put the whole chilies so you can see them in the soup, or roughly pound it like me, but with fewer chilies. Like this is good for me. My soup will become very hot and spicy. Now I remove it to a small bowl and will set aside, but let's squeeze some lamb juice over it to prevent it from becoming dark. Now everything ready to cook, so let's go. In the pan or pot, bring water to a boil. On medium heat, directly add the fresh spices and herbs into the water. Before next step, I will let the herbs infuse in water for about 20 minutes on medium heat. During that time, let's prepare more fresh herbs to add later. I will roughly cut the culantro for about 1 to 2 cm and set aside. The following is cilantro. I will also roughly chop it and put it together with the culantro. 
I think the soup is full of herbs, fragrance, and aroma already. So it's time to remove them. In the classic tom yum version, you would let the herbs cook until the end and serve them in the dish as well. But the herbs are not meant to be eaten, so at this point, you can remove it. Now add the fish and do not stir until it's halfway cooked. I don't want my nice aroma soup to turn to fishy smell. Then add the chilies. Shallots and garlic go in the soup. Still, don't stir yet. Add chili paste. Mine is extra hot. Now I can stir to mix the chili paste in the soup. And I'm gonna ladle the soup over the fish meat to make it cook too roughly. Time for the straw mushroom and some fish sauce for a more Thai flavor. Then add shrimp and let it cook for about 10 minutes. Still on medium heat, add cilantro and cilantro to make the soup have more flavors and become even richer. I will add evaporated milk and stir for a bit. Then add some fresh lamb juice. While you are adding it, it's better to turn off the heat. Otherwise, your soup will have a little bitter taste. Can you see how beautiful the soup is? I would love it if you try my tom yum fish recipe. Now we are going to cook steamed fish with lamb and garlic. First, I'm going to wash my fish inside and outside nicely. Then I will dry it with a paper towel. After that, I'm going to diagonally slice the fish meat open so that the fish meat will cook evenly and faster. Now place the fish on a plate and bring it to a hot steamer. Before closing the lid, for a better taste, I will season the fish with some soy sauce first. Then, I will let it cook for about 20 minutes on medium heat. When your fish is cooked, leave it in the steamer until it cools down a little bit. So during that time, you want to prepare the lamb and garlic sauce. I will slice my lamb into wedges. It's easier this way to squeeze it by hand. For decoration, I will thinly slice the lamb for about 10 to 15 slices. Next, I'm going to smash the garlic to remove its skin. Then I will just roughly chop it. Now chilies. As you might know, I'm good at eating spicy food. So I will prepare the chilies quite a lot. But as always, you can adjust the taste to your liking. The next one is Thai celery. I will cut it into about 1 to 1 and half inches. After I put chopped chilies and chopped garlic in a bowl, add white sugar, fish sauce, and lamb juice. Then, give it a mix until the sugar is dissolved. To make the dish look appetizer, don't forget to decorate your fish with the sliced lambs. Now pour the sauce all over the steamed fish and sprinkle some celery leaves and voila! Steamed fish with lamb and garlic is ready to dig in. As always, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with your friends, and chop the like button. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.